Hey everyone, I'm Rather Incoherent, and this is Parallel Ashcan Pete. I don't know what I expected with Parallel Ashcan Pete, but it wasn't removing Duke. Now, to be fair, this is not removing Duke. This is replacement. You can run both sets with replacements. You can run the new stuff and the old stuff at the same time. However, Duke doesn't start in play. That's part of Ashcan Pete's text. So if you run Parallel Ashcan Pete, and today I will be talking about full parallel. I don't like mixing and matching, so I'll ignore parallel front and normal back and vice versa. Just full parallel Pete. You begin the game with Pete's guitar in play, which means like you you probably still want to run Duke. Like you have Duke in Racked by Nightmares in your deck because Duke's kind of a nuts card. He's a two cost, two, three soak asset that gives you like incredible action economy. And maybe it's worth building an ally heavy charisma deck that searches him out with cards like that. But not starting with Duke with this stat line is a problem. Two book, three fist is not a character that does things. I'm sorry. Admittedly, difficulty zero does help this a lot, but at zero experience, you know, when you're getting off the ground and getting the experience to do difficulty zero stuff, it's, there's really not that much going on with the difficulty zero archetype right at the start. One thing they did that was absolutely necessary though is they buffed Pete up to 7-7 seven, seven soak in this, because the original Ashcan Pete, I think he's 5-6 or 6-5, because he's meant to have Duke soak as well. Thankfully, they didn't just make this character doomed to die without doing anything. It's just not going to do much. But let's get into what it does do. You start with Pete's guitar and play. And Pete's guitar is sick, but there's the then clause that kind of ruins it a bit. It takes up no slots, so that's great. You can exhaust it and you choose a non-elite enemy at your location or a connecting location. You move that enemy once in a direction of your choice, anywhere you want. And then if there are no enemies at your location, either heal one horror or gain one resource. So I think this should probably trigger reliably, not like the first turn, maybe not the second turn, but the third turn and all of every game, you can probably just like take an enemy and bounce it in the corner forever. There'll be scenarios where it's like almost no enemies or the enemies are acolytes and they have doom and you can't reliably use this. But I think in most games, this is going to be making you invincible to horror and giving you Jenny levels of money. Not quite either of those things, but pretty close, and it allows you to move enemies around a lot, which is definitely valuable. For instance, this is very helpful. I like Duke is not going to punch the dancers in Black Throne, but the dancers got to dance to something, and it may as well be Pete's guitar. That'll help a lot. Now, getting back to Ashcan Pete, why do we want to move people around so much? Reaction, when a card you own that is attached to a scenario card would be discarded, add it to your hand instead, limit once per round. And if that doesn't immediately make sense to you, if you aren't familiar with what that would mean, we're talking about trap cards, we're talking about barricade, hiding place, a bunch of cards that I don't play with because these cards are typically pretty bad. But if you make them infinitely reusable, we start reevaluating them very severely. His star is plus one, choose a card you own attached to a scenario card, you return the chosen card to your hand. This is actually just very confusing to me because like we already get to do that and we already trigger that effect when it's discarded, i.e. when the effect goes off. So I don't really know when we're voluntarily ending these effects early. It feels a bit weird to me. It seems like it would be much better if we got it back in the graveyard and we searched our deck for one. This feels like a blank star to me. And this feels like a blank X is a good summary of Ashcan Pete's parallel version to me. I'm, I'm going to be up front. This thing does not jive with me and I feel very confused. Now let's get over to his deck building rules because these are important. He's Survivor 0 to 3, also known as Survivor 0 to 5. There's a very little difference. He gets Improvised and Tactic cards level 0 to 4. This is going to cover traps. Bad news about Improvised though, that is exclusively Survivor cards, one of which is a customizable Survivor card that you can no longer bring to 10 pips, which is deeply frustrating. And he gets neutral cards level 0 to 5 and up to 5 other guardian cards. It's a really weird deck building thing. I don't feel terrible about it. The thing I feel terrible about is uh, we get Duke, or not Duke and Rock by Nightmares. We get uh, the guitar and we get Hard Times, our new uh, treachery, our new unique weakness. It's going to immediately go into our threat area and then every time we draw one or more cards, we choose and discard that many cards from hand. Better known as you immediately use two actions. Because, uh, yeah, that's that's not manageable at all. That is a weakness that is just an immediate two action tax. You can't tolerate that being in play. And since you have three fists and you're not the main fighter, you should have time to get rid of it. I will say this is one of those weaknesses where sometimes you get it late in a scenario. You can just finish the scenario. There's like two turns left. If you have to discard a bunch of cards, it won't actually matter. It isn't a harsh weakness, but it absolutely is not an easy weakness. This is very solidly middle of the ground and a problem. So, you want to reuse traps. 
and you want to manage enemies, specifically non-elite enemies, by using traps. And this does get into the immediate problem of, um, why? Why aren't we just shooting them with guns? And I know every time I say this, somebody's like, Rita's good and all the foot-based rogues are good. I understand that these things are functional and you can do them, but from an optimization standpoint, I don't have to shoot them a second time once they're dead. So I look at this rigmarole and like there are cards that I recognize I can use with this. And there are some cards that are uniquely powerful with this in ways I would not have expected. Hiding Spot is a god awful card. It's a one cost fast event. Each non elite enemy at any location gains aloof. And then at the end of the enemy phase, this goes away and you have to deal with them. Unless it goes back to your hand because you got a guitar. And essentially, Ash Can Pete just says that enemies don't exist with Hiding Spot. At least non elite ones. And that's a little bit wild, but you do have to find Hiding Spot. But there's some pretty good draw in red. And your access to tactics gives you access to, uh, like, Barricade's not the best card, I'm not going to pretend it is. But again, it gets a lot better when it's free. I mean, it's not fast, but it doesn't cost a resource. It's a little bit more expensive in terms of what you're paying, but still. Not only enemies cannot move into attached locations, so you can prevent them entering the location in the first place. And the upgraded Barricade, I think it's level 3. There's no way it's level 3. That's so gross. Why would it be level 3? Also, this is supposed to be alphabetical. Why is Barricade on the far right next to Unearth the Ancients? What's going on? Maybe it's not supposed to be alphabetical. Who knows? Yeah, it's level three. But this one prevents enemies from spawning outright, which is notably better than just stopping them from moving. And you don't necessarily have to do it every turn if your team's going to be buckled down for a while. The most important thing is that Barricade and Hiding Spot have vaguely similar functions, allowing you to more reliably do the thing you're supposed to do. My issue is that, like, what if you don't draw those cards? Because you can't search for them as reliably as you can, like, prepared for the worst into a weapon. This feels like such a jank, weird thing. And rather than theory crafting further about this, I'm very much in the phase of the game where it's like, I'm just gonna, this is how I felt about Parallel Wendy. I'm just gonna wait and see what people do, what people tell me about it. Because I look at this and I fundamentally do not understand why I would choose to do this. I, I know we're going to eventually. This is so weird that we're gonna play with it. We just want to know. But like, why are we choosing to do this? Other than morbid curiosity, why am I going for these bizarre hiding spot strats when like almost all the fighters in the game will very reliably, you know, fight and not build this fucking terrifying house of cards where like an elite enemy shows up and we don't know what to do or we end up with enemies in multiple rooms and now we can't hiding spot all of them. It, it just feels, I'm sure it's fine. I'm legitimately sure it's fine, but I feel a dreadful sense of unease when you ask me to play Home Alone on Ash Can Pete. I look at this, I'm like, oh god, can't I just play Arkham normally? Why do we have to do this? I like the concept, I'll say this. From an optimization standpoint, I look at it with a sense of genuine bewilderment, but this is a really powerful effect that enables cards that have been up till now been abject fucking garbage, and Hiding Spot on Parallel Ash Can Pete is like, a campaign defining gimmick. You can just build a deck of nothing but draw cards and hiding spot. And if you can get even one clue a turn on top of that, your character did their job, which is really bizarre and really interesting. And yeah, Parallel Ashcan Pete might be a juggernaut in Before the Black Throne because you can just hide from the dancers, not that they'll ever get to you because they'll be playing your sick ass guitar and they'll be busy dancing in the corner. At least until you get three of them, then you'll have to hide. Well, but we have barricades for that, we've got so many plans. Ashcan Pete's got all the traps. It's such a weird thing, it's such a weird thing, and I genuinely like it as a person, but as an optimizer, I am... I'm optimistically hesitant. I'm not cautiously optimistic. <laughs> I, I'm so mixed on Ashcan Pete. I like that they made him. Final verdict. Anyway, thank you for watching. I'll be back tomorrow to go over the previewed cards for the new expansion.